Hey, hi everybody, happy Monday. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Ken Mewich, a Fibromyalgia Wellness Center, Stetson Chiropractic Clinic, and we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite subjects today, uh, since almost everybody that comes to my clinic uh, has some form of injuries that we have to deal with along with any other conditions. But first I wanna talk to you about something. <clears throat> it's been in uh, the news recently, uh, and that is uh, breast implants and how they're affecting patients. You know, a number of years ago, I actually uh, <clears throat> you know, was involved with uh, a case that was very, very interesting. It had to do with uh, a, an actual actor. Well, it was an actress. Now Everybody's called actors now. It was an actress uh, who I was treating, uh, and uh, she was very well known, as a matter of fact. And uh, what she did was uh, she actually discussed with me the possibility of actually have breast implants. And she was having enough problems uh, as it is, and I said, well, you know, um, I tried to give her the best possible answer in, in respect that you look just fine and everything else, but if you've already made up your mind and decisions, there's nothing I can do about it. The only thing I would suggest is make sure that <clears throat> whatever you plan on doing, that you don't overdo it because uh, that will adversely affect your posture and all sorts of other things uh, involved. And uh, so uh, with that advice, she went and she... <laughs> Uh, actually got breast implants, but they were way too big for her, uh, and uh, it really, uh, her proportions were way out of, out of balance. Uh, this was uh, at least 25, 30 years ago, close to that. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> so afterwards, she came back, and she showed me uh, her implants, so forth and so on, and I said, great, how do you feel? Uh, and she said, uh, well, a little bit uncomfortable yet, but uh, I'm trying to get you know, uh, along with it. And I said, what, what seems to be the problem? She says, uh, I don't know, just uh, maybe it's just uh, after surgery because she was having a lot of fatigue, having a difficult time getting back on her feet and so forth. Uh, and I said, well, uh, a lot more rest and so forth and uh, make sure vitamins and anything else that you can uh, take. So make sure you go back to your doc doctor, make sure there's no um, uh, infection, stuff like that. Uh, and so <clears throat> I didn't see her for about two weeks and she came back and she was just in horrible shape. I mean, fatigue, uh, pain all over, but just like, um, just like having flu, uh, achy joints and soreness and, and uh, uh, again, a, a huge fatigue factor, having headaches, so forth and so on. Uh, and so I said, you know, man, you got to go back to your doctor. She says, I have, and, and they don't seem to be having a problem. They don't seem to be having an answer of what's going on. Uh, and so uh, eventually what happened was that uh, after about a month, she told me she was going back in and uh, that she was going to have her implants removed, uh, which she did. And she came back and she was feeling somewhat better, uh, but the symptoms were still uh, laying low, so to speak, in her body. A lot of fatigue, soreness, aching, so forth and so on. Lo and behold, this is before I even knew about fibromyalgia. This is before uh, 1990. Uh, and... Uh, I'm almost positive that, uh, you know, she's kind of, uh, she went back and moved to Los Angeles and um, she's still uh, on the uh, entertainment scene, so to speak. I haven't seen her, but uh, I'm sure she has uh, fibromyalgia. Uh, remember, fibromyalgia is triggered by some physical, emotional, chemical trauma. And uh, although uh, we do have proof that it's, uh, uh, there's a genetic factor involved that's causing the problems, uh, that people are actually born with it, but at so much different levels. I mean, you know, some people are just more comfortable than others. Uh, uh, other people are very, very sick and so forth. A lot of it has to do with, uh, I guess, uh, the relatively of, uh, relatively of, of what their life has gone through. Uh, bottom line is that I am certain that this patient had uh, and maybe still has fibromyalgia. Uh, and uh, I can't tell you how many other women have gone through this. And if, she, if they have this genetic marker, uh, I'm fairly certain that this is what actually has kicked their uh, condition into a much higher level, so to speak. So <clears throat> if you know someone that, uh, that fibromyalgia has had uh, breast implants, so forth and so on, or uh, women that have had breast implants that are not quite sick, you might want to suggest that they contact me at the Fibromyalgia Wellness Center so we can discuss uh, various things that we can actually help them with. And uh, that's uh, all I can say on that in that respect. Uh, I, we know what we're doing. We've done it for decades. Uh, and, but uh, since I saw that on the news, uh, it just automatically struck me with, you know, I bet you that patient, uh, that individual has uh, fibromyalgia, just like uh, some of the uh, uh, actors uh, nowadays, uh, like Lady Gaga, she's been, she has uh, professed the fact that she has fibromyalgia, what they're doing about it, so far I've tried to contact her, tried to uh, 
get information to her, but obviously that'd be, that would be like cutting through cement. <clears throat> well, all of the people that are making suggestions who are, why would she listen to somebody that has had 30 years of, uh, of distinguished experience with uh, many uh, successful fibromyalgia patients? Okay, so on and on with the show. Uh, today we're going to be talking about soft tissue injuries, and, and this is probably one of the craziest things that people actually uh, deal with uh, because uh, they don't know that much about it. So first of all, let's, let's take a look at this. what happens after an injury, okay? Well, you have simple injuries, okay? Uh, and then you have uh, the more serious or complex injuries. Complex injuries are like fractures or, or a lot of internal injuries, so forth and so on, uh, that uh, maybe puncturing of organs, so forth and so on, really bad. Uh, where the simplest uh, of injuries are, you know, you run into a wall or, or, you know, bruises and so forth and so on. Sometimes injuries that you don't even see, and, and that's a problem. Uh, and so what constitutes an injury? Well, again, you have the more serious ones like fractures and, and bleeding, external bleeding. Now, if you cut your hand, you can see the blood going down and boom, it's washing out and so forth and so on. Uh, matter of fact, I nicked my, my finger the other day. No big deal. It just bleed it, bleed it off. There's very little inflammation, swelling. I just put some medication on. No big deal. But for those things that are internal, okay, uh, the, uh, you, uh, get, uh, you bend over and, and uh, you pull a muscle or, you, uh, like I say, you hit your head, or uh, automobile accidents, trips and falls, so forth and so on. Many times those things can actually cause injuries that you don't really see externally, but you feel internally, okay? Uh, so there's, uh, <clears throat> sometimes there's visible, visible bruising, especially when you have uh, falls and so forth, uh, and swelling, but many of those uh, injuries are uh, no visible signs, okay? You usually don't have swelling in the back that sticks out like a swollen, you know, uh, hit your elbow or, or something like that, or, or bang your finger where you can actually see it. That's deep tissue. Uh, many of the places in your body have layers of muscles. In the back alone, you have seven layers of muscles, and they're all called erector muscles. They keep you upright, erect. And so any of those can be injured. <clears throat> so what we're going to be dealing with here is not so much the fractures and the, the serious things. We're talking about the more common things that people come in with, uh, the soft tissue injuries. Uh, and now there's three different forms of soft tissue, simplistic. Now, we're not going to get into cartilage things and stuff like that, but we're going to talk about muscles, tendons, and ligaments. Muscles and tendons allow you to move, okay, like this and here and here. Okay, ligaments are different. They're a little bit different tissue. They're uh, more rough, more hard, uh, because they hold your joints together. So I can't move a finger any further than this or a hand. Or I can't move my neck any further than this and this and so forth. And the reason why is the ligaments don't allow that to happen. Now, if I didn't have ligaments in my body or if the ligaments were that loose between here and the end of my table, I'd probably be on a floor in a bag of bones. That's what holds our joints together, okay, and does not allow for any further damage. And so when you have a ligament damage, it's totally different than muscle and tendon because of the type of tissue. We're going to get to that in just a few moments. So let's go to the four uh, different uh, uh, areas of repair for tissue. That's most important. First of all, you have active swelling, and you have uh, what's called passive congestion, you have repair, and then you have what's called remodeling. So let's take a look at the first one, active swelling. So tear yourself, you, you run into something, uh, you get an auto accident, whatever else. Uh, immediately there's swelling, active swelling. It usually lasts anywhere from, um, uh, we'll say, uh, 12 to 72 hours, half a day to 72 hours, can be longer, uh, depending upon the individual and the severity of the condition. Uh, if you don't have external evacuation of blood, okay, like I said, you cut your finger and it's all internal, what happens is that they, that will continue to bleed. It's called internal hemorrhaging. Hemorrhaging, you have to understand, doesn't have to be so serious that you're going to die, okay? Any bleeding internally has some hemorrhagic form involved with it. So when this happens, uh, a couple of things occur. Uh, pain, obviously and usually loss of range of motion. Those are the most common things, okay? Uh, for the first 12 to 72 hours, uh, the best way to treat that uh, is, uh, is ice or rest, ice, compress, elevate. But don't put the uh, ice directly on your skin. Uh, it's usually out for anywhere 15 minutes on, about half hour off, 15 minutes on, half hour off, so forth and so on. Uh, <clears throat> if you can elevate the area, so forth and so on, if it's the back, just sit right back into an ice pack inside of a cloth, 
You don't want to have it start burning. If it's burning, that means it's damaging your tissue. You want to take it off. Okay, it's very, very important as far as you understand what's happening. You don't want to damage your skin. You don't want to have frostbite on your skin along with an injury. So you have that way, you have an external injury and internal. I can't tell you how many people I've seen that have used ice directly on your skin too long or heat packs that I have. And now they have two things. They've got damage externally, but also internally, okay? So what you want to do during the first uh, three days is primarily use ice. Don't use heat. Uh, on a new injury. Heat is going to add additional fluid and more congestion and so that's the second stage and that's called passive congestion. <clears throat> now that usually uh, lasts anywhere from two to four days or more again depending upon uh, a number of different things, the severity of the condition and so forth and so on. Uh, again we're trying to reduce the pain uh, and at this point even though some people want in the first stage they want you to start moving. Okay you can start moving in the first stage, understand it's going to be more painful, uh, even any, any kind of emotion itself, even light and so forth, try to stay below the level of pain. Passive congestion, that's really important. Now you want to start range of motion, okay? Uh, if it's an elbow, you want to make sure you just keep moving that, even if it's below the level of pain. You don't want to lose what you already have. Range of motion is extremely important in this respect because you're taking that tissue and you're trying to stretch it. And in doing so, not only are you moving that garbage out of there, see, because that's why it's called passive congestion. That tearing of tissue uh, releases blood and other chemicals in, in that area and they have no place to go. I mean, not like an external cut, okay? And so it's congested, okay? it's garbage in there. And so by motion, so forth and so on, <clears throat> you're going to actually help get rid of that inflammatory material and so forth. Now there's another thing that you can use that's really, really important. A lot of people don't realize. I try to explain this to the patient. One of the best ways to get rid of this passive congestion is to use this, this type of treatment. About three minutes cold, three minutes heat, three minutes cold, three minutes heat, three minutes cold continuous. You want to do cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot as, as much as you can. Cold constricts, heat dilates, constrict, dilates. So you can have an accordion effect and that's going to push that additional uh, congestive fluid, okay, out of the way and it's more easily picked up by your body and evacuated, whether it be through urine or, or defecation, whatever else. You want to get that stuff out of your system. The longer you leave that in that area, the longer it's going to take for you to heal. Okay, and that's really important. So try that. Now, in this case, the cold, hot, cold, you can put it on your skin, okay? But if it starts to burn, take it off right away. So it might be only two minutes, okay? Uh, whatever. So you just want to leave it on there so it, it, it causes that swelling to stop. Then heat actually contracts, okay, and boom, boom, back and forth, back and forth. Keep doing that as often as you can. How often? How fast do you want to get healed, okay? I mean... <clears throat> That, that's the bottom line. If you can spend a good 15, 20 minutes on this, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, it's going to really be advantageous to you. And then you can take a little rest and then do it again, back and forth. And during this period of time, you want to do motion on that, okay? If it's the neck, put it on there, and you want to motion. You want to turn. Try to uh, get as much motion as you can, uh, uh, as quickly as you can back. It's going to help in the long run. Now, the third stage is repair. And this is uh, funny because... Uh, a lot of people like to hear us. It's going to take anywhere from five days to six to eight weeks. What? <laughs> yes. Okay. Do you think this, this is just a miracle? All of a sudden it's going to start healing? No. Why? Because you're moving. But if you don't move, then you're going to have congestion. And that's going to take twice as long. You can lose range of motion. So what you're doing is you're actually re-stretching that tissue that's been torn. Okay. And in so doing, you're tearing a little bit, but it's repairing. What? I don't understand. Well, listen, you've got to stretch that tissue, okay, that's been torn a little bit, because if you don't, I'll tell you, then you're, you're going to lose range of motion. I can't tell how many people that come in after an injury. Oh, I was afraid to move, and, you know, now look, I can hardly move. I've got to start from point zero, okay? We've got to get that range of motion back in, and oftentimes we have to stretch that tissue gently, but still, we're going to release some chemicals within there, and we're going to be tearing some tissue that's scar tissue, okay? So it's very, very important, again, <clears throat> during this period of time that you increase range of motion. And again, during this period of time, you can do the cold, hot, cold on there. That's going to minimize uh, the congestion from uh, the tearing. After an injury, again, every time you use your tissue, you're going to be tearing it a little bit. Some of you want to rough through it, man, and just say, okay, I'm going to rough right through it. Okay, if you tear it uh, aggressively, Okay, let's go back to stage one again. Okay, <laughs> active swelling, uh, tissue tearing. They're going to go to... Uh, congestion, so forth and so on. Don't be so hard on yourself. You have to understand the tissues have been torn. 
For those people that think, and I love it when you listen to TV after an auto accident, uh, minor injuries on this automobile accident, and the car looks like a pretzel for crying out loud. Hey, there's no such thing as minor injuries, believe it or not, okay? You're injured, you're injured, okay? And how can a, a TV personality, you know, newscaster say, ah, oh, minor injuries, you know, no big deal. I'm telling you, some of those minor injuries end up to be chronic for the rest of the people's lives because they hear, and then the insurance companies say, well, it was just a minor injury, no big deal. Believe it. Believe me or not, you know, in working with patients for over 30 plus years, I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a simple injury if you don't take care of it properly. And that's when we get back to this fourth stage now, and it's called remodeling. Now, I'm going to show you an example here. This might look crazy, but I'm going to try this one. Okay, so this is tissue, okay, muscle tendon. So you turn your head, rotate, and you stretch your arms, so forth and so on. Normal, okay? After an injury, however, what it looks like is this, okay? See if I can get this done here. All of a sudden, it looks like kind of like a weird, you know, spider type thing. And when you stretch, oh, you tore it again? Well, look, look at this, all right? Every time you tear it, okay, this tissue gets more and more unusual, and more and more crazy, okay? All right, and then you start, oh, again, and so forth, and each, every time. So that's, again, why you start losing range of motion, okay? And every time that you, say, use this afterward, you're a little painful, okay? Why? Because this tearing, okay, is a mini going back to stage one, active swelling, okay, and then congestion, so forth and so on. But you gotta get through that, you gotta do that, okay, to get yourself healed. On the other hand, if that's for muscle and tendon, and so for muscle and tendon, okay, after this period of healing and repair, guess what? It's back to normal, you know, except that's muscle and tendon, except for ligaments. For ligaments, I'm going to use a bit, little bit more aggressive one here, okay? What happens is that once they start tearing the ligaments, they don't heal properly. They get worse and worse until finally you have very little range of motion and just like especially, I, I love the ones with, uh, with ankle injuries that they've had for years. They can step off a curb and bingo, boom, 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 boom. now, they're, now they're, they're, their ankle swells up. Why is your ankle constantly swelling? Because you're constantly tearing this scar tissue, okay? Uh, this scar tissueing, especially for ligaments and, you know, the, the normal insurance agents and companies don't like to hear this, but this is a fact. This can take anywhere from, say, 12 weeks to as long as a year to repair properly, okay, especially if you're re-injuring this area constantly over and over again. Every time you do that, it gets worse and worse and worse, so forth and so on. So, <clears throat> usually it's uh, about uh, 12 to 14 weeks, but for a, a lot of severe cases, especially auto accidents, so forth and so on, where you hit with tons of force, okay, it's going to take longer, especially if you don't take care of it. And guess what? If you don't take care of that, it's going to cause an osteoarthritic condition. It's going to de cause degeneration uh, in one form or another. And it's going to cause chronicity, ongoing. I can't tell you how many people that come in with old injuries, they constantly re-injure themselves because they haven't been taken care of properly, okay? So how are you going to take care of that scar tissue? Well, for those people in the know, okay, uh, chiropractors, physical therapists, so forth and so on, if they use this technique, uh, it's very, very simple. You use two forms. One is pulsed ultrasound. Now, if you've had ultrasound, you know it's deep penetrating and it's heat, it's wonderful, it feels great and so forth. But pulsed ultrasound, you don't feel because it, you can actually, you don't feel the pulsing, you know, pulsation, but what it, uh, uh, the uh, ultrasound is like as it's going in, like a meat tenderizer and it's breaking up that scar tissue. Then you use what's called Russian stim. It was developed by the Russians uh, during the Olympics when it was the Soviet Union, and we didn't know what they were doing, but they were experimenting with their own uh, athletes. And I always wondered why in the U.S. Uh, our guys would only go through maybe one or two Olympics, and then they were too old or they couldn't function, whatever else. Whereas the Russians, geez, they were in four or five uh, you know, Olympics. They, they came back even stronger. Well, because they were experimenting. And one of the things they were using was called Russian stim. Uh, Russian stim actually uh, is an electrical stimulation, and when it's on, it stimulates the body to produce regular connective tissue to replace the scar tissue. How do you like that? So we use pulse ultrasound to break it up, and then Russian stim to actually lay down regular connective tissue. For those people that have come in that we use this on, I'm telling you, it works like a charm. They don't have a, re they don't have a remodeling. They don't have, they don't have a 
chronicity actually evolve and they're back in life okay it returns uh, uh, tissue back to about 90 percent normalcy except for those people that maybe have diabetes it takes longer uh, or fibromyalgia takes longer but for the most part we still have a great deal of repair uh, and uh, that's the most important thing uh, that we uh, increase the range of motion reduce pain and reduce chronicity and in doing so we're also reducing the possibility of uh, uh, long-term uh, problems, osteoarthritis and degeneration, so forth and so on, uh, in patients. And, of course, they love it. They can do things. They can go back to golf or they can go back to uh, running or, or, or just doing things normally that they would do without having a lot of uh, aches and pains and injuries and so forth. Uh, and that's the most important thing. So the pulse ultrasound, Russian stem. If you don't know about it, if you have patients that have, have chronic problems, it's not the end of the world. There's answers. There's answers. You know, uh, either Fibromyalgia Wellness Center or Stetson Chiropractic Clinic, uh, we can help you. We really can. Uh, you know, if you take the time, if the doctor takes the time to find out what the problem is, they can really take care of it. So what we want to do is uh, reduce the possibility of, of chronicity, re-injuries, increase range of motion, uh, and, of course, uh, uh, get rid of the pain. Those are the most important things. Get you back on your feet so that you can do normal things that you used to do that you can't do anymore. That's the most important things, okay? So, uh, again, this is Dr. Ken Mewich. Uh, let's see. Whoa, boy, it took way too much time. But this is a really important subject. But uh, this is Dr. Ken Mewich, Fibromyalgia Wellness Center, Stetson Chiropractic Clinic. Uh, again, giving you some wonderful information, hopefully, that you'll be able to use immediately. Uh, don't forget the cold, hot, cold. Uh, and uh, uh, if you have any questions, so forth and so on, please uh, feel free to give us, give us a call. Uh, and I'll be on radio, as a matter of fact, uh, next not this coming Friday, the Friday after uh, April 5th, uh, and I'll give you more information on that. I'll be talking about fibromyalgia. Thank you so very, very much. Have a wonderful week. Look forward to talking to you and visiting with you next week. Bye-bye now.